Hi, my loves, it's Danielle Mercurio, rocking it solo for you today with a little bit of an empowerment boost. Sometimes we get into this slump where we feel like everything is piling up. We have all these goals, all these aspirations. We follow all of these inspirational people. And yet, what do we do with it? Where do we go from here? How do we actually achieve the life that we want? How do we get back on track? How do we feel inspired? by who we are? How can we have a sense of ease and confidence and flow when it comes to our life? How can we wake up in the morning and feel ready to go? Not feel this weight, not feel this need to focus on all the things you have to do, to not be in the kind of despair of what isn't happening, and more so naturally be in a place where you feel like you're on the right track where you feel like things are in flow, where you feel like your focus isn't always 100% on your healing. Let's make your life 100% your choice, your reality, and up-leveling it into a space where you are choosing it to be better, more expansive, more magnificent, and a beautiful reflection of who you really are. All right, so let's talk about this idea of choosing your life. You know, we chose this life from the moment we got the ping up in the cosmos that it was time to come down, right? We all came from somewhere, and that somewhere gave us some kind of indication, some kind of clue, some kind of nudge to say, hey, time to come to Earth, time to do the thing in Earth school, time to learn your next series of lessons, time to actualize your soul in unique ways on this planet. And you were like, cool, I'm here for it. You know, I heard about Earth or I've been there before. I've been dying to go back. Is there any place that you've like gone on vacation or retreat or like lived before and you're always like, when do I get to go back? Many of you felt that way about Earth. You're like, when do I get to go back to Earthland? When do I get to go back and visit that planet? When do I get to embark on all the juicy things that it has to offer because there's more that I want to do and I feel like Earth is going to really help with that. And so Earth, of course, is a place to learn. It is a place to grow. It is a place to be challenged. It is a place to heal. But it's also a place to work your magic. And sometimes in the healing journey, and, and please let me say this to like start us off here. This is not about spiritual bypassing. This is not about thinking that you can get a get out of jail free card when it comes to the work that needs to be done. If there are things in your past that are holding you back, you got to look at them, right? You've got to address the trauma. You've got to address the shadows. You've got to look under the hood. However, there gets a point where you have to realize I've done enough. At this point in time, I feel complete with the lessons, with the healing, with the uncovering. And I'd like to just be in the open space, the opportunity of whatever that healing situation, that lesson, that trauma needed to show me. I'm ready to be on the other side of it. Okay, so use your discernment to understand that. Understand when it's when you know it comes to a point where you can't just stay in the wounds all the time. You can't just stay in the work all the time. You can't just stay in the shadows. Eventually you have to come out and see the other side and be in the light and be in the good fortune, uh, the payoff of what you just did. You know, the universe does, and I, I don't like to use like punishment and reward, but the universe does like to reward you. It's like, thank you for taking the time to be supported. Thank you for looking at this trauma. Thank you for healing this wound. Thank you for being open enough to work on your family lineage. And now, why don't you be in the next level of your existence? Why don't you sink into this idea of abundance? Why don't you look at your life being a little bit easier now, a little bit manageable? Right? Part of why we do healing is, is because there is this kind of like karmic situation that happens and there is this understanding with the universe that you will you know, heal and work through certain things. But again, part of this life is also to be in the joy, in the beauty, in the love, in the support, in the fabulousness that it has to offer, to be in the riches of it. And so if you want to claim your life, if you want to choose your life to be easier, 
if you want to choose your life to be more abundant, if you want to choose your life to be more accessible and more joyful and more fun, you have to choose it. It starts with you. And as soon as you start to notice objections, that is you making a choice not to choose it. As soon as you start to notice the blocks, as soon as you start to notice the resistance, as soon as you start to tell yourself all the reasons why it's not time yet, you are saying, I am not choosing fun. I am not choosing abundance. I am not choosing love. I am choosing to stay stuck. Do you want to be stuck or do you want to be free? It's your choice. And you might say, well, I don't know how to be free. Okay, that's fine, but still choose it. I don't care if you know how to do it or not. Choose it. Get yourself to a space in your life where it doesn't matter if you know what you're doing. Just know what you're choosing. And from that space of knowing what you're choosing, more opportunities around the how and the clarity and what it is that you need will come through. And there's also this permission to release this burden of feeling like you are the sole creator of your life. The only way for you to receive and expand in this existence falls on you entirely. And that is not true. So in addition to making a choice of being on the other side of your healing, being on the side of more fun, joy, and ease, you also are making a choice to recognize and realize that you do not have to do it all on your own. You are not the sole provider for your life. You might feel like it, but you're not. And from that understanding, then guess what? You get to work with the universe. You get to work with energy. You get to work with miracles and magic. You get to be the muse. You get to be open to surprises. You get to play with space. Playing with space can feel really weird because from an early age, we weren't really given space. Or if we were, we were kind of told what to do with it. Think about how much of your life from, from the moment you were born, you were told what to do. You were given solutions and and you were given timelines and you were given structure and you were given programs and you were given ideas of how your life should go. You know, that takes a long time to undo, but sometimes it can be as simple as just making that choice. I choose not to buy into the ways I was taken care of before. The ways I was taken care of before, I was force-fed solutions. I was force-fed what to do. I was, you know, always looking at everybody else. I was always comparing myself. I was always feeling like I wasn't good enough. So now we make the choice to realize like all of that, that was just part of early onset conditioning, early onset programming. Part of it was necessary. Part of it was part of your learning. Part of it did keep you alive. Great. It served a purpose. But that purpose isn't part of your current purpose. That purpose isn't part of where you're going. When you look at living a purposeful life, you can see what held a purpose, and then you can see what holds meaning to your higher purpose, okay? And when we look at it from that perspective, we make a choice. Once again, I choose to no longer feel like I need to be force-fed a solution. I recognize the freedom that I have to make decisions when it comes to my life. I understand that I dictate my timeline. I create the story, the narrative, and I follow it from there. You are writing a story for your life and you get to choose. Do I want to keep writing it the way I'm used to, the way that I believed I had to, or do I want to write it in a way where I get out? I'm more expansive. I'm more free. And so essentially what we have to do is we have to kind of create this like gut renovation right? Or like gut, like, like if we're looking at your life, like it's a house right now, where do you need to like gut it? Where do you need to tear down the walls? Where do you need to uh, add an addition? Where do you need to, you know, paint the room? Think about that. Like if you literally broke down your life right now and you were to look at your life like a house, what would you take away? What would you improve? What would you renovate? What would you modify? What would you add on? What would you expand into? And with the knowing that you had all the resources to take care of it, right? All the, all the funds are right there to help you with that life renovation. And so again, it's making that choice. It's making that choice to be available to the renovation of your current life, the expansion of your life, of knowing that you are allowed to do it, 
that's a big thing that happens as well when we, we get confused around making that choice. Yes, in theory, I can say, do you want to live in a more abundant life? You'll say, yes. Do you want to be happier? Yes. Do you want to have more money? Yes. Do you want to have more love in your life? Yes. Danielle, oh my goodness, yes, yes, yes. And you go to these events and these experiences and you get all hyped up on the high of the, of the yes. Yes, abundant life. Yes, everything is possible. And then you go home and you're back in your house that needs to needs renovation and then you're like wait how how I, I don't know how I just know I want it I, I just know I got really excited and it felt really yummy and good in the moment and I was really high on my own supply however where do I go from here and so this is the this is the key point okay when we when we look at this idea of where do I go from here well, where you go from here is to notice now when anything that defies that big old yes, or not the big old, that big juicy yes that you were just saying, you clear it. As soon as something that does not feel like a match for where you're going comes into your realm, you say no. This is not a match. I don't care if it's given you money before. I don't care if it's given you love before. I don't care if it's given you joy before. I don't care if it's given you a means to survive before. If it doesn't feel like it matches that big juicy yes, then it is a no. And are you willing to trust that? And if you say no, then you've got more work to do. But if you say, yes, I want to trust it. I want to be available for it. I want to see where it will go, where it will take me. Then you are in for some really awesome surprises you are in for some really cool ways of things working out. However, you have to be in that discernment. When you feel what it is that's possible for you, when you feel that expansion, when you feel that up level, there are going to be things that come your way that's going to test you. Your ego is going to try to interject. It's going to say, whoa, 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 this is too much work. I don't like all this. I like it better when I'm force-fed solutions and I do what everybody tells me. And you have to allow yourself to get to that space of saying, mm -mm, your way is not actually easier. It feels like it's easier, but really deep down, it's just torturing me. It's just creating more sabotage. It's just holding me back. It's just tying me up. It doesn't feel good to stay in something that's complete, that's over. Do you really want to eat like the same thing every day? Do you really want to live the same life every day? Is that why you're here? to do the same thing day in and day out? Or did you come here to evolve? Did you come here to let the evolution that is your life move through you to experience this world with your soul leading the way? Why not give that a chance? What's the worst case scenario if you don't? Okay, you go back to doing the hard, heavy human things. Worst case scenario, you go back to the hard, heavy human thing. Okay, but why not? Take a chance on your soul and the evolution that's available to you. So taking a look at your life, and it starts with making that choice, that choice for things to be better, that choice for things to be more evolved, that choice to continue to advance, to take it to the next level. And I get it. I'm in the middle of that right now. I'm in the middle of being in the up level and looking down and being like, what the frick? How did I get up here? What the F am I doing up here? Oh my gosh, this is scary. This is weird. However, if I take a step back down, I'm going to feel so much more uncomfortable. If I'm like, oh, but, but, but I see people I know down there, or I see situations I'm used to over there, or I see, you know, things that have brought me success before right over there, or I see Bravo TV with a really amazing new lineup of housewives that I can binge on. I can step back down and I can go to those things, but guess what? In the long run, I'm going to feel way more uncomfortable by doing that than staying in this up-leveled platform where eventually my body and my mind and my spirit will adjust. Right now, I am in a current up-level. I'm on a higher platform and it's weird and it's shaky, but guess what? If I stay long enough, I will adjust. I will recalibrate. I like to think about it like this. So I have a rescue dog. And we live in a loft, of, like a converted loft building. And uh, it's really beautiful. And uh, because I have sensitivities when it comes to noise and, and auditory and different things, I like being on the top floor. And it's just more fabulous to be on the top floor. So we're on the top floor. We're on the fourth floor, which means when she has to relieve herself, we have to clearly go outside, go down the elevator, go outside. And sometimes we're doing it early in the morning, late at night, and it can be chilly, right? And I always am like, 
oh, like that, that feeling of like, oh my gosh, it's going to be cold. It's going to be cold. And I'm like bracing myself, even though I bundle up and all the things I'm like, it's going to be cold. And, and it is right. You open the door and you feel that rush of cold and it goes to your bones and you're just like, oh, and you, and you know, I'm looking at my sweet little dog and I'm like, will you just relieve yourself already? And there are times where she does and we run back in and it's great. And then there are times where she doesn't and she needs more time. But what I always find is that's so interesting. As much as I am hit with that wave of cold, The more we walk around, the more we're outside, the more all of a sudden I get used to it. The more, it's not to say that I'm like all of a sudden warm, but my body found a way to make me more comfortable. And so when we up level, recognize that your spirit, your body will do the same thing. So I'm in this up level right now. I'm on this new platform. It's a little shaky. It's a little scary. However, I know that my being, my guides, and the universe are doing everything that they can to make me feel comfortable, to help me adjust, to help me recalibrate. And then eventually this new platform will feel normal and grounding and expansive and easy. But we have to be willing to be in that initial discomfort as we ride it out until we feel comfortable again. And then, you know, we'll ride that out for a while and then the next thing will come and we'll up level from that and so on and so forth. And that's, that's part of the journey. However, it's necessary. It's necessary. And we need to release that idea that it has to be hard, that it has to be hard to change your life. Yes, it will involve a lot of details. Yes, there will be a lot of moving parts. However, it can still be fun. It can still be a supportive experience. So you need to ask yourself, whatever it is that you're willing to move into, if you're right now saying like, I am making a choice for my life to be better. I am making a choice to pursue my dreams. I am making a choice to actualize my goals. Then you need to ask yourself, how can I make this as easy as possible? And focus on that. I want you to focus on it like no one's ever told you things couldn't be easy before. Like, you know, that one scene in Legally Blonde where she got into Harvard Law and her ex-boyfriend or like is kind of like, you got into Harvard Law? And she's like, what? Like, it's hard? Question mark. That's kind of how I want you looking at your life. Like, what? Like, it's hard? You know, like looking at any circumstance in your life where someone told you no, someone told you it wasn't going to be easy, someone told you it was going to be difficult, someone told you that, you know, it's not for you dismiss all of that. That doesn't exist in your current reality of focusing on what you want. In your current reality, you have so much freedom. You have so much space. You have so much opportunity. So do not drop into that old space of someone else telling you otherwise, of some kind of opinion. Drop into the space of recognizing it gets to be easy. It is easy. I dismiss any notion of it being difficult, hard, or not happening. And I fully step into learning about how this can be as easy as possible. Universe, show me ease. However, the disclaimer is you have to believe it. You can't look at the universe and say, I, be- I still believe it has to be hard, so you show me it, it can be easy. It's not going to work that way. The universe wants to take your openness, take your vulnerability, Take your readiness for it to be easy and show you from that place. But it's not going to show you from doubt. It's not going to show you from your stubbornness. It's not going to show you for your like, prove me, prove to me. It doesn't work that way. So allowing yourself to release and drop the old parts of you that thought it had to be hard, that thought it had to be difficult, that thought you weren't smart enough or capable. I am telling you, you are so smart. You are so brilliant. You are so wise and you are so magical. Please take that in. Like I'm, I'm saying it to you. Like if you're like, oh, that's probably another listener. No, 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 you, you, you are smart. You are wise. You are brilliant. You are magic. And from that, you deserve ease. You deserve grace. You deserve to be shown a way that is much more in flow. So we have to gut out the old stuff tear down the walls, remove anything that was a conditioned response around it being difficult, and now building this new house, this new life, with the understanding that there is always ease, there is always a solution, and it is always working out in your favor. Always. 
and from that recognizing that it also happens on a full-time basis. Another question to ask yourself, how can I accept abundance and support on a full-time basis? How many of you accept it on a part-time basis? You're in a part-time relationship with the universe. You're in a part-time relationship with your dreams. You're in a part-time relationship with what it is that you want because the rest of the time, you're not sure if you can fully receive it. You feel like you have to justify it. You're no, you don't know if you can really have it. You're super involved in other people's dreams and their goals and their needs and their desires and their priorities that you are on a part-time basis with abundance and the universe. One of the things that you have to realize when it comes to this idea of abundance, when it comes to this idea of your worthiness, you never have to return it. You never have to give it back. When the universe gives you a gift, it is yours. Keep it. Do not bring it back to the store. There is no return policies when it comes to what the universe provides you. Sorry, you can't return it. But there's a part of us that wants to. And that probably stems from, again, something we were told early on. That doesn't exist anymore. What exists now in your new currency, I accept all the gifts that the universe wants to give my way. I accept all the opportunities that life wants to provide me with. I accept it on a full-time basis. I am accepting a full-time gig of developing my relationship with the universe, of being in this abundance flow, in being in this auto loop, of it being easy and resourceful and fun and luxurious. Can't get, I want you to know so when you start to give it back, when you start to drop down, when you start to limit your worth, let the universe gift you. You know, that can come down to like with your pricing or your salary request, you know, whatever it is, you know, we, we have a number in mind. We know like, okay, you know, and that's part of the universe being able to give you a gift, so to speak. It's like, okay, cool. You know your worth, we will find someone or some job that will match it. So cool, believe that, you have to stay in that. If you're looking for a job and you know you're, you know, you're worth 100K, then the universe gift to you is matching you with a job that's 100K. If you are a healer and you charge um, $150 an hour, the universe will gift you with someone who would love to give you $150. That is a great exchange for them. We have to trust that exchange. But as soon as we, you know, go back to, oh, I trust the universe on a part-time basis, we say, oh, you know, actually, I'm, I'm 100 an hour. Or actually, uh, I don't need to negotiate my salary. The, you know, 90K is fine or 80K is fine. We all of a sudden go to this place where we have to, we feel like we have to drop it a little bit. We have to give it back a little bit. Stay in the knowing. That's, you know, what we're talking about here. Stay in, if you're 150 an hour, great. And if anything, start to think about how you can increase to 175, how you can increase to 200 an hour, as it feels good to you. And you'll know, you know, I've, I've increased my prices a lot over the years. You know, I started at like $15 a reading, you know, to $44 a reading, to 100 to, you know, up to $500 for a reading. And it's only because... Every time, you know, over the years, every time I've worked with people and I've held space and I've had sessions, the universe keeps sending me individuals that seem to have more abundance. And every time, like, it's almost like there's this, like, new flow, this new cadence that happens because it's like the more that I learn, the more that I take on, the more that I'm able to provide with people, that kind of ups the level of abundance and financial income to match it. And so the universe just kind of starts sending me people and I can kind of feel out and assess what their exchange is like and what they're looking to pay for things. And based on that, I increase my rates. And I'm telling you, every time I increase my rates, I always get a new match and we're always in alignment and we're grooving, you know? So, and I don't return it. Like I can't imagine right now going back to $44 for a reading. I would get so sick I would get so burnt out. And I'm not saying, and like, please realize, like, I am not saying this from the space of like, $44 is a value if that's what you charge. And to the person that's a match for that $44, like, it's going to be perfect. But that's not where I'm at right now. It doesn't really matter what the number is. It's about the vibration and the frequency and the exchange. And the frequency exchange for me is at a higher price point right now. 
That's just where it is. And it's the only way that will work. And I honor that because if I don't honor that and I start to feel bad and I start to feel guilty and I start to think about all the people that can't afford me and I say, oh, well, maybe, you know, just for this person, I'm telling you, I will be out of integrity. I will get sick. I will get burnt out. I will fry my nervous system and my energetic system. It'll be too much. I'll be on overload. It's not for me. So I have to trust that the people that aren't a match for me aren't a match for me, but they're a match for someone else. And that's wonderful. Like that makes me so happy because I can't work with anybody, everybody. It's not possible on many different levels. And so I have to be honest with myself, which is hard sometimes. It's hard to set those boundaries, but it's the only way. And that's what I'm learning up on my new platform that I'm on right now, creating those boundaries, saying no, not having as much time on an individual basis to give to individuals, being okay with that because there's other things that I am being called to do. And when those other things are calling you, even though it can be scary, even though it can feel a little disruptive, even though it can feel a little unnerving, it's bringing you to a place of it being better of soul advancement, of being more on purpose. So when you're in that, asking yourself, how can this be as easy as possible? And how can I accept abundance and support on a full-time basis? Full-time basis. I want you seeing it everywhere. I want you living it all the time. I want you knowing that you are supported no matter what. However, you set the terms. The universe will support you if you want to live off $10,000 a year. The universe will support you if you want to live off of $8 million a year. You set the terms and you have to be energetically on board with them. And if you are, boom, it's a match. But you have to meet yourself where you're at. And from meeting yourself where you're at, you can grow and you can increase your worth and you can increase the quality of your life and you can continue to grow and build and lean into more. And it takes time. So that's why I say meet yourself where you're at and know what your standards are. And it's not just about money and a dollar amount. It's about, you know, the kind of people you surround yourself with, the kind of environment that you live in, the ways that you choose to decorate your home, what it is that you need. You can be a minimalist and abundant. Like, please realize that, right? Like if it's an energetic match to be a minimalist and live in a tiny home, like amazing, you're living your most abundant life. If that really feels like it's of the highest caliber and standards for you, like amazing. Like I'm so proud of you. I'm so grateful that you are living this abundant life. It's about what energetically feels good. And then the money, the house, the material, the people, whatever it is, just show up to be an equal match for you. And if you're looking for even more ways to up-level, maximize your worth, your potential, have a better relationship with money, then I highly, highly, highly recommend my friend Amanda Francis's Money Makeover course. I have been an affiliate for it for years now, and it's been such an amazing platform and opportunity for individuals to really hone in on what's going on with their bank account, what's going on with their abundant mindset, what's going on in the spaces of lack, and really be in that space of magic when it comes to money and responsibility when it comes to money and love when it comes to money. All that is possible with this course, which is available now. If you choose to opt in, not only will you get this amazing program, I know there's payment plans available to make it really easy for you and your bank account. Uh, you can also get a bonus session with me. You'll get a one-on-one -on -one session with me where we uncover what's going on with money when it comes from the space of your soul. What did your soul intend to do when it came to resources and finances in this life? And where is there some lingering karma around it? We'll use astrology. We will use soul regression. We will use different tools to really get you into the space of understanding of what's going on when it comes to your soul currency and how that plays into your financial currency within this life. So if you're interested in si signing up, go ahead and check out the show notes, look through the program, see if it's a good fit for you. If so, let me know and we'll get you that bonus session. All right, freaking adore you. So then we look at the space of, you know, living a more actualized life, making a choice where you're really stepping up and choosing you. Our body is a piece of that as well. One of the things that I have 
struggled with in the past was body dysmorphia. I had an eating disorder, binge eating, and I was considered to be overweight. And so with those things, my body and the ways that I couldn't relate to it, the ways that I felt like it was wrong because I was the one that usually weighed more than my my peers, and the ways that I would numb out from binging on food would always keep me small and keep me out of alignment and keep proving to me that I wasn't like everybody else. You know, my body from an early age felt like it was being monitored, felt like it was being watched, felt like it was being told how to be. And because of that, and because of the fact that I do believe that our soul is taken on many bodies and many lifetimes and many experiences, it takes time for us to develop a relationship with our human body. And if you're in an environment where that wasn't nurtured, where that wasn't recognized, where you were just kind of told how you should look, what you should eat, it very likely will backfire at some point. And for me, it really started to backfire right before puberty. I remember, you know, looking in the mirror and not understanding my body, not understanding the reflection, not understanding my arms, my legs, my belly, my face. Like I would stare for hours and I would try to make meaning of it and I couldn't, I couldn't connect. And then I started gaining weight. I started being told that I was, you know, going to be dangerously overweight soon and I was going to have all of these health problems. And, you know, I went up to like a size 14 and it was like, I remember Express still had size 14 and it was like, all right, well you can, ne-. and it's so interesting. This is, I'm telling you, this is like how we manifest in other ways. I was so, like, I was told basically that, like, size 14 was it. Like, you can be a size 14 because Express still had size 14 clothing. But after that, you're done. And this was before, like, you know, uh, stores were more accepting of uh, sizes and had more options. You know, back in the day, like, it, it, it really was, like, size 14 or you had to go to, like, Lane Bryant. And I was terrified of that because of fear that was instilled in me around it. And so I, like, knew and it was so interesting to me that subconsciously, I would, I was a size, I was probably a size 14 for about 12 years. I never went over 14. It was like, I knew that was my limit, but I also had no idea how to not be a size 14 either. And, and it, it had nothing to do with the size per se. I think at the time it did, I thought I had to be like, you know, like I would dream, like if I would get down to like a 12 or a 10, oh my gosh, I'm like, then, then I'll be happy. Then people will love me. Then I'll be just as pretty as my friends all these different things I would tell myself, but I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I couldn't get below the 14. I couldn't get above the 14. That seemed to be my threshold at the time. And so I'd be this, you know, size 14, always feeling like I was, you know, the chubbier one. I was the, the one that didn't have any control, that didn't know how to take care of herself. That was always what I was telling myself. And then I would look in the mirror and I would be even more confused. Right. And then, you know, I would sneak and and buy food and hide it in my room and go out in the woods and eat. I mean, I think there's an episode around like some of my former binge eating habits. And then after college it got, and I, when I started living by myself, that's when it really got out of hand because like there was no one watching me. So I could binge to my heart's content. And so I share all this because, you know, our body is a reflection of what we're not on board with from a internal space. And for me, you know, having the body dysmorphia, having the binge eating, feeling like, you know, I wasn't as pretty or physically capable as other people, you know, was showcasing where I wasn't allowing flow, where I wasn't allowing openness, where I wasn't allowing ease, where I wasn't allowing connection. I was so fixated on trying to receive external love that I never really focused on the internal love. I never really focused on the choices that I could make in my life. I never even thought about what does it mean to be aligned with my body? What does it mean to befriend myself? What does it mean to like my body and to trust my body? Because what I was showing was I didn't trust. Of course, I didn't trust my body. I was always told that my body was not in the right condition, that there was something wrong with it, that I had no control, that I, you know, was a hot mess, so to speak. 
that I was always on diets, that I was always like not understanding how to work with food. With anything, I knew more about food. I knew more about exercise. I knew, I mean, I was actually, during that time, I was uh, like a lifeguard. I was a swim instructor. I was a spinning instructor. I taught aerobics. I ran, I swam, you know, like I, I was doing all the physical things, but because I didn't trust my body, because I never got to know my body, I never got to really know myself and I never got to really find that groove of what my body wanted. And it wasn't until around age 26, 27 that I started to lean into this idea of meditation, which allowed me to start to lean into this idea of possibly getting to know myself. And then from that space, I started to find intuitive eating and I started to find ways to be more on board and on the same page with my body. And the more that I became on the same page with my body, the more I actually could look in the mirror and start to make like connections. Like I could start to see like, oh, this is what my body looks like. This is what my body does. This is what my body wants to eat. This is how my body wants to show up. And I found myself less drawn to the idea of binging, less, you know, staring at the mirror and feeling so depressed and confused and more on board with my body being a carrier and a vessel and a transport in this life. And the more that I was on board with myself, the more that I was on board with my goals, the more that I was on board with this idea of having dreams and up leveling and being in, in the space of possibility my body started to get on board with that too. And we started to trust each other. I realized so much that if I don't trust my body, then I'm in trouble, that things are going to completely go askew. As soon as I started to, you know, go to that place and I, I, I still have it, it still happens where I look in the mirror and I feel off or I don't look in the mirror for a while. That's usually an indicator to me. If I've like spend a lot of time and I've noticed that I haven't been looking in the mirror. I haven't really been looking at myself. I haven't been really making time to like look at what I'm wearing and how I'm dressing myself and doing my gua sha and like certain rituals. If I notice that I'm reaching for, for food in a, in a way that reminds me of binging or I kind of go back to those old rituals, it's a wake up call for me. Cause I'm like, whoa, 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 what's going on right now? Why aren't my body and I on the same page? Why aren't we in a groove? And I, look at that and I see what's going on. But for me, my body has always kind of been an, an external indicator of how I'm feeling internally. And before, when I didn't have any control of my body, it was showcasing I didn't have any control of my life. And so as I look to even where I'm going, going forward, I have to be on board with my body. I have to make sure that my body is getting what it needs. Intuitively, when it comes to eating, when it comes to the way that I move it, when it comes to the way I like to sweat, when it comes to massage, when it comes to healing, all of that is necessary and important because it supports me being in this frame of mind and in this deep relationship with the universe where things are easy, abundant, and supportive on a full-time basis. My body is on board with that. And as far as like my weight, and again, there's, there's other episodes on it. We can go deeper in later ones. I, I have naturally been around a size eight, and I just say this for reference, for the last 10 years. And it's, for the most part, been because I've let my body be on board with me. I've let my body be on board with my spirit. I've let my body be on board with my soul. And I'm open to however it needs to change and flow and evolve. However, this, the, the understanding that it kind of went back and I shed a lot of weight. The reason why I shed a lot of weight was because I dropped the heaviness. I dropped the burden that I put on myself. I dropped the illusion of not being in control or feeling out of control or feeling like I was a hot mess or feeling like I wasn't doing things that were right or constantly feeling like, you know, I was a certain way or being. And so once I gave myself permission to really follow my dreams and listen to my soul, my body went with that. So a question to ask yourself when you're looking to be in that space of up-leveling, that space of improving and advancing your life forward, you also have to ask your body, how are you in alignment with this? Because it's going to play a part. It really is. And that doesn't mean that you have to like get into this like super rigid workout and yoga and green juice. If it means that, great, but it doesn't have to mean that for you. It's less about what you're eating or doing and more about how you're being with your body. 
the more respect you have for it, the more you appreciate it, the more you understand what needs to happen for you to be in a dynamic with your life where things work and flow. And I understand that now. I understand my schedule and what I can show up for and how my body plays into that. And because of that, my body has naturally shown me how it wants to be. The way that my body has been the last decade, which it still takes me time because I've been technically a lar- like a, a different figure for more of my life. My, you know, basically from you know, age 11 to my mid-20s, I was always considered plus size to now being a space where, I mean, even sometimes where I still get thrown off sometimes is people call me thin and I'm like, I, I don't really, that, that sometimes is hard for me because I also don't really love labels when it comes to anything. So uh, for me, it's just kind of like, well, this is my body. This is Danielle's body uh, as opposed to thin, average, athletic, curvy, whatever it may be. But what I'm sharing is, is the way that my body has been the last decade is the way that my soul needs it to be. Okay, so my spirit is reflecting how it's feeling based on my body. And when my body does go through changes or I notice old tendencies coming back or I notice I'm not connecting with it, it does start to want to go back to that space from before. And it's just a, a, a little bit of an alert for me. I don't look at it as a negative thing, just as a little like, oh, tap, tap, Danielle, you haven't been paying attention. I'm like, oh, got it, got it. All of this comes down to leaning into your soul intuition. You know, whether we're talking about our body, our life, our money, our friendships, our relationships, where we live, whatever it is, it all comes down to how do you trust it from that deep intuitive place inside of you? How are you allowing yourself to be guided by your spirit, by your soul? And how are you allowing that to continue to develop your relationship with the universe? And from that space, how can you continue to make a choice to lean into the idea of that it gets to be better? There's two sides to everything. It gets to be worse or it gets to be better. Best case scenario, worst case scenario. Lack, abundance. What do you want? And once you decide what it is that you want, allow yourself to be in that adjustment period as you lean into how it can continue to be as easy as possible. As you lean into being abundant and supported on a full-time basis. As you lean into ways where your body can continue to be in alignment and a source of support in all of this too, and a reflection of everything. So do, you know, sit down, look at your current landscape of your life. Look to see what old conditioning or programs need to be gutted out, where you need to tear down some walls, where you need to remove some old stories or staying. The biggest way that you can do that is watch your language. Notice what you're saying. Anyone that works with me know that I oftentimes will repeat what you say back because usually what you say back will not be from a space of ease. It'll be from a space of difficulty. Watch your language. Big one. And from that, start to develop more of a relationship with the now, more of a relationship of understanding that you are supported and how you want that support to go what you want that support to look like and trust the process of being who you are from an internal, external, environmental, emotional, spiritual perspective, be in the trust of who you are. And the more that you build that trust, the more you expand that dynamic, the more will flood through that will amaze you. The more evolution will move through your being the more you'll be able to experience this existence, not just as a journey, but as a joy. And from that, it's not about what you need to do, what else you have to do, where else are you going? It's more about I am existing, I am thriving, I am supported, and I freaking got this. And I know that it's all okay. And I know that it's better than okay. And I know that I am smart, wise, magical, amazing because I choose it. I claim it. I choose to manifest my life in the best ways possible. I choose what's right for me. And sometimes I might not have the words to even be able to explain it. So don't. Don't ever feel like you have to justify, that you have to make people understand. You just have to be. That's it. That is your assignment here on this earth. Just be, honey. Just be. And if that's the case, how would you like to dress up that be? How would you like to 
indulge that part of you? How would you like to glam it up? How would you like to expand it? How would you like it to be even easier, more abundant, more amazing? The choice is yours. And I'm trusting you know which side to choose. All right, love you.